Good morning, everybody, uh, the GLF community and all our friends online and here. Um, yeah, I've been tasked to say something about how do we reach the sustainable finance tipping point if there is such a thing. We know that the financial sector uh, has been a, a key driver um, responsible to the multiple crises that we are facing today, climate change, land degradation, biodiversity loss. But we also know that the finance sector has the potential to be an important part of the solution of this crisis. Because any of the solution for solving or mitigating or adapting to the major crisis that we are facing, namely climate change, biodiversity loss, growing inequity, inadequate uh, food system, conflict, we require some massive upfront investment uh, and sustained financing before we reap the benefits for the environment, society, and financially. We know that the possible solution for this above, above mentioned crisis are those that will induce positive tipping point if applied at scale, like moving out of a fossil fuel based economy into a circular bioeconomy, removing perverse incentives, reducing inequities, conserving and restoring ecosystems. For all these, political will and investment are needed at all scales. So we need money. Unfortunately, this money is currently spent elsewhere. So we have seen positive development in, in the political agenda uh, at national and international level. Latest of these have been the CBD COP 25, uh, 15, uh, which offered a finance day for the first time and adopted the global biodiversity framework. This new global biodiversity framework includes key targets to increase finance for nature and biodiversity. There was also some good progress made during uh, UNFCCC COP 26 and 27 with some modest progress in funding the fight against the climate crisis and addressing for the first time the question of losses and damage. The financing sector is also showing change in the right direction. Still, there are many issues remaining and, and they all relate to a specific color, which is green. So let, let me uh, tell you a brief story about various shades of green. And, and the first of these is a greening of finance. We do acknowledge that sustainable finance standards are going in the right direction, but it is still too slow and mostly focused on the short term and gearings toward maxim maximizing present profits at the expense of the future. The year 2022 was particularly bad for sustainable finance. The North American bank dug in on fossil fuel uh, and pressured the GIFADs uh, to capulate. Index fund managers slow walked on the net zero more than $8 trillion were removed from sustainable investment tally, and the list continues. The year 2023 seems to offer new hopes, uh, with the UK and European banks leading on net zero, the new Biden Act in the US, but the, the jury is still out. The other shade of green is the financing green. And here, despite significant progress, there is still a great finance divide. Divide. Um, this leaves developing countries unable to respond to crisis and invest in sustainable development. About 60% of the least developed countries and other low income countries are now assessed at high risk of debt distress, double the 30% of 2015. We also know that the finance flow to nature based solutions currently has $150 billion per year is less than half of the 380 something needed by 2025 and only a third of the 480 billion needed in 2030. And then last point about the green color is the greenwashing. Major finance giants are actively funding economic sector responsible for the Amazon deforestation while adhering officially to ESG standards or having deforestation free pledge. There are doubts thrown at many of the carbon offset program based on scientific evidence. At c 4 we believe that nature-based solution is a sound investment. And while the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, the next one is now. And we have shown to our combined experience that the genetic, ecological, and social science tell us that selecting tree species is good and help. And it means that agroecological principles like unique agroforestry, regenerative agriculture, and other development could work in improving our food system and agriculture. Overall, 
uh, we believe that taking a system approach uh, brings many benefits, and, and we have the proof of concept. I mean, for an investment of $800 million in, in the forestry and agroforestry program, uh, we have managed to uh, end, end the protection of about 100 million hectares of forest. We have reduced about 70 gigaton of avoided CO2 emission, about 25 million hectares of land brought under restoration. If you add all these, even at the US $10 a ton, uh, the $800 million that were invested in FTA, they translate into $240 billion in economic returns avoided losses. So we can do it if we really want. The question that we have to ask is, do we really want it? Thank you very much. <laughs>